Welcome to this short, shocking review of Extreme Rules. First, we have the Intercontinental Champion Dean Ambrose versus The Miz. And if Dean Ambrose gets disqualified, then The Miz wins automatically and becomes your new champion. Well, we saw a lot of disqualification teasers. We saw them trying to battle over a steel chair. Dean Ambrose gets a steel chair. He's like, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. Then The Miz comes along. He's going to grab the chair. He's like, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you. And then I'm just like, dude, what the hell's going on? I thought this is like a, you know, why are we trying to get this? Qualified. Are we stupid? In the back, you have the commentators there explaining how important the Intercontinental Championship is, how Booker T won the Intercontinental Championship, and it made his career, apparently. It made his life. We saw Ambrose go to the top of the turnbuckle, land a double axe handle right onto the Miz, off the top rope, onto the outside. But in that process, Dean Ambrose tweaked his leg and, oh, sore leg. So then the Miz capitalized and hooked in a feature four leg block. But that did not make Dean Ambrose tap out at all. So they're both standing up. Ambrose grabs the Miz. The Miz holds on to the top turnbuckle. He rips the pad off and then all of a sudden Dean Ambrose sees that that there's an exposed turnbuckle and he's like oh I'm gonna land the Miz right into that but then the referee's like no 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 remember you're not allowed to do that although I have seen matches that do do that and they don't they get away with it like whatever anyways uh, that was a thing there but then after that Ambrose got distracted by the referee and then bang a running knee from the Miz and it was a Daniel Bryan running me, but uh, the Michael Cole, he called it a drop kick, so didn't even matter. The referee counted the two, the crowd didn't even react to it. Michael Cole botched it up, and uh, Booker T later on said, Oh, I think it was a knee to the jaw. All right, we're coming to the end. So the Miz asks Maurice while Maurice is on the apron, Slap me, slap me. Like he's trying to get some like action or something. Slap me. And then, like, so Maurice slaps him, and then the referee's like, Wait a minute, wait a minute. You came with the Maurice, you came, I mean, you came with the Miz, and um. Um, this is awkward because I might disqualify the Miz, but it doesn't make sense because blah blah blah. Maurice gets thrown out, but while she's getting thrown out, the referee's distracted while talking to her, and then Dean Ambrose or the Miz or something, the Miz gets Dean Ambrose, rams him right into the referee's ass, and then the referee like tips over and he does a freaking awesome bump, like he just flopped right out of the ring, and I thought that was freaking awesome. And then freaking he just woke up, he woke up in five ten seconds. He's like, oh my head, my head, but oh. Oh, I got a, I got attacked by Dean Ambrose even though I didn't see him attacked me so he's he's like going so close to the to the timekeepers area he's like oh my head and oh you know and Dean Ambrose is like no sir I didn't do this referee I didn't do it he's making it obvious like if you if he say he didn't do it maybe he did do it mate and then the Miz comes from behind he does a skull crushing finale and then the referee's like oh hang on I'm not gonna ring the bell on the disqualification I'm just gonna go back into the ring and tap the one two three and you're new intercontinental champion the Miz and it's pretty good because I don't care for Dean Ambrose winning the title or even having the title but the Miz is your new champion and apparently is the second highest he has seven title reigns Jericho has nine so there we go who knows we might have 20 title reigns for the Miz in the future next we saw a backstage segment with Charlie Caruso and Bailey Bailey gets introduced and she's like man I'm pumped up I'm so ready but before that happens once Bailey gets introduced, whole lot of boos erupt from the crowd, and holy crap, they don't like Bailey. Bailey's trying to say, you know, she's like, oh, you know, no one likes Alexa Bliss. They obviously don't like her because of that. This is your life segment from last time, huh? Yeah, wink, wink. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. But the crowd still doesn't react to her. The crowd hates Bailey. Damn, I've never heard so many boos for her in, in like in her entire career probably. So then she's like, oh, you know, I'm gonna try and bring the extreme. I'm gonna try and go to my inner, inner Tommy Dreamer, my inner Sandman, and oh, believe it or not, I'm gonna throw a mention to Steve Blackman because he might not be watching. So there you go. We got Noam Da and Alicia Fox versus Sasha Banks and Rich Swan in a mixed tag team match. This one was interesting. If you notice, once Rich Swan came out, no reaction to him whatsoever. Once Jojo said, from Baltimore, Maryland, and then the crowd's like, yeah, yeah, wow, he's from our town, he's from right here. And then Rich Swan's like, yeah, I'm the happiest man alive. Oh yeah, I can't handle it, whatever the hell his song is. I'm just like, I was like, what the hell? That's so, that's a flip right there. Like, that's the only reason the crowd would pop for him. So in the match, we saw a jumping hurricane runner from Rich Swan. He jumped from the ground, 
while uh, Noam Dahl was on a seated position on the top of the turnbuckle and he did a, a top rope hurricane run. It was pretty sick. I like that. And during this match, we had Michael Cole of all people. Michael Cole and Booker T and Corey Graves are just sitting back like, all right, let's listen to this. Michael Cole is telling the entire situation of what happened between Noam Dahl, Alicia Fox, uh, Cedric Alexander, uh, Rich Swan. I'm just sitting back and I'm like, holy crap, this all happened in a month or something? Jesus. And in the end, we saw Rich Swan land a Phoenix Splash onto Noam Dar and he picked up the win. And I said to myself, and pr probably everybody else did as well, dude, Rich Swan won in his hometown. Bailey can't say that. AJ Styles can't say that. But guess what? I bet you, I bet you $100. That Vince McMahon didn't even know, didn't even know that Rich Swan is from Baltimore, Maryland, wherever, wherever he is. I bet you $100 that he didn't know Rich Swan is part of that country. I bet you didn't even know where he lived. I thought, I, I bet you thought he was like living in Africa or something. One of those, uh, uh, you know, help me kids. Who wants to walk with Elias? I thought this segment was pretty good, actually. Like, he's showing his ability of playing a guitar. And dude, he knows how to play the guitar. But singing, uh, singing is a different thing. But he, he played a different tune. Like, he doesn't play that. He, he always starts off with that. Like, there's a song that I know that, start off, that starts off with that. But anyways, he starts off with the same tune. But then he goes into a nice little pattern of strumming and stuff. And he sings, this is the town. He's like, you know, Baltimore, you're all a bunch of whores. You don't know where you're going. Just, you just going to snore. I don't know what the hell is going on. What the hell is he singing about? Anyways, and in all honesty, I thought at the end, he had a Bob Dylan type feel to his uh, performance, you know, and that's the little things, that's the little things he did out of stuff like this, to where you don't see a wrestling match, you just hear somebody doing a live concert, right in the middle of the ring, and everybody's got their phones up in the air, they think it's Bray Wyatt Jr. right outside, but no, 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 it's Elias. Who wants to walk with Elias? Hell yeah. We have Bailey versus Alexa Bliss for the Women's Championship. Kendo stick on a pole match. And believe me, you want to type in hashtag kendo stick just to get the trendings on this crap because, dude, this match wasn't the best. It was not what I was expecting. I thought it was going to be something something but uh no it was it wasn't anything it was horrible it was just a one-sided match so we saw uh bliss get a ton of chance from everybody in the arena and then once they announced bailey boo who is she she doesn't belong to the crowd anymore she might have stayed home instead of going to the mall with her friends watching uh monday night uh raw and smackdown but we don't like her anymore, apparently, because of that This Is Your Life segment. That's pretty hilarious. We also had some dueling chants from the crowd, let's go Bailey, let's go Bliss, or something like that. That was pretty cool. And then, so they had a little battle, right? You know, they had their little, you know, punches and slaps and, you know, you're the you're the girl, I'm the girl. Anyways, then they they both go up to the pole. They both, they grab the kendo stick and then it drops. It drops off the pole. And I'm just like, uh, okay, the match is done then. Kendo stick on a pole, it's not on the pole anymore, it's finished, the match is done. But no, they, they're like, they, they, I don't know, they're, they're doing, they're slowing the match down for a little bit so they can build up the suspense to get the kendo stick that's on the outside. So then like, someone's about to get it. Then Bailey eventually gets the, the kendo stick, but she doesn't use the freaking thing. She's hesitating. She's like, oh, I got this in my hand, but I don't, I don't know what to do with it. And then she's about to go hit Alexa Bliss, but then Alexa Bliss spears her like Roman Reigns and freaking grabs the stick and then starts wailing on Bailey. And holy crap. Bailey took a smashing with that kendo stick. If you thought that one shot on all the Raws building up to this match was brutal, holy crap, the shots that Alexa Bliss gave to Bailey with this kendo stick. Dude, that one shot with the kendo stick to the back of the neck onto Bailey, holy crap, that was brutal right there. That was sick. I liked it. You know, I'm not going to be one of the persons like, oh, the poor thing. No, no, no. I thought it was freaking amazing. So, all in all, we saw the Even Flow DDT from Alexa Bliss. If you don't know what that is, go back in history. That's a WCW move right there from Raven. I call it the Even Flow DDT because it looks like that. And Alexa Bliss doesn't have a, a name for the move. What the hell is that all about? And there you go. The winner, Alexa Bliss, still your champion. 
Eh, not a good match at all. Please don't watch this match if you want to. Please don't do that. But if you did, hey, you saw what I saw. In the crowd, we saw a special guest of the show. A former TNA Tag Team Champion, Mr. Pac-Man Jones. Three, two, one. He's back, he's back, Mr. Pac-Man. You might say, how do I know this guy? How do I know Pac-Man Jones? Dude, I don't know him from a bar of soap. But I know he was in TNA and he had one of the best theme songs. I don't know, probably in that time. I freaking love that song. That countdown and then the the, the the song in general. Holy crap, man. That is a, that's a thing of beauty right there. And you know what? I was thinking of this when they pointed him out in the crowd. I was like, dude, R-Truth, where are you, buddy? Get some Pac-Man Jones and bring him to this feud between him and Goldust. I mean, like... Former tag team champions right there. We had the match of the night right here. In my opinion, the match of the night. The Hardy Boys versus Sheamus and Cesaro. And boys, this is a great match. A steel cage, awesome match. I thought it was brutal. It was a little bit, uh, uh, you know, like, you're like, oh, come on, come on, you just do it, you just do it. And it was also a little bit stupid. But hey, good match in general. Let's, let's break it down. Now, before the match starts, the rules are simple. No pinfalls, no submissions, but you have to escape from the cage, either from the top or from the door. And believe me, when I heard that, I was like, dude, this is deja vu in, in the wrestling games I used to play. Especially, especially WWE 13. Now, why do I say WWE 13? It's because every freaking hacker or whatever they try to call themselves, noobs, all those type of peoples, they would always do that type of match. And man, it was either a 50-50 chance or, or a 25% chance that he might win because these, there's always a tag team that do, does that because it's the easiest match on WWE 13 or well, at that time. So they would always do that match. They'll just beat you down, spam you out, and then go over the top rope. I mean, go over the go over the cage and then win easily. And uh, I remember that in the good days. That was so good memories. So yeah, the rules are you have one member of that tag team go over the cage, lands on his feet, he's outside, right? But the other member of the tag team has to get out also to win the entire match. So it's good drama, you know, I like that. It's a good drama story right there. You know, you have to go together. You have to try and do this together. But the match is all screwed up in some ways. And I was also thinking of this as well. I was also thinking, why can't the Cesaro Sheamus team, right? Why can't one of them throw out Jeff or Matt through the door? Like the door's clearly open. Like there's no referee that's guarding the door for some reason. So why doesn't one of them throw one of the members out, right? Then they just beat on the other one. Like two on one situation. It's, it's simple. Like why couldn't they do that? Like I would have done that in the games. I don't know, it's just, you know, it's something, something I, I thought of. Okay, so we have Jeff Hardy. He first gets out of the cage, right? He's over the top. He gets out of there. He lands on his feet on the outside. He's like, yeah, 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 but Matt's still inside. He just has to do the, the two-on-one thing. So, you know, Jeff's an idiot right there. He's stupid for that. Matt climbs to the top of the cage, and he almost gets out. Jeff's trying to tug a wall with Sheamus and Cesaro, and it was almost that close, but Sheamus knocked Jeff down, and then they brought Matt back in, and that was an awesome moment right there. That was a good one. Okay, so Jeff's trying to get back in, right? He got knocked down from Sheamus, so he's trying to get in through the door entrance. Well, he's just thinking, oh, you know, I was a stupid idiot for doing that. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have walked out on my brother and uh, made it for myself. So he's just about to try and get back inside, but then a bro kick right to the door and landed Jeff Hardy, and holy crap, he landed on the, the, the ground, right, on the outside. Oh, so brutal, but it looked so good. So Jeff's down outside. Matt's trying his best. He goes to the top of the cage once again, but then he gets up each other from Cesaro, and holy crap, a good team right here, a good team move right here. Cesaro, Sheamus, they deliver white noise off of the top of the cage onto Matt Hardy. Holy crap, this was awesome. That's when the This Is Awesome chant started going. Oh. So then Jeff recovers outside, and then he starts to strip off his clothes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So then he gets back on top. He goes to the top of the cage, right? He's standing on the rooftop, standing on the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. So then he does the whisper in the wind off the top of the cage. And this is flawless, right? This is flawless. Like, there's no hesitation, no nothing. Right on to Cesaro and Sheamus. Freaking awesome. Holy crap. So then Matt Hardy trying to collect uh, Jeff Hardy. 
but Cesaro and Sheamus are climbing to the top of the cage, right? They're both doing it at the same time. So Matt Hardy's like, come on, brother. Come on, brother. Let's get out of here. Come on. So he's trying to go out the doorway. He's dragging uh, Jeff Hardy. He's dragging his lipped arms and body and all that stuff. Cesaro and Sheamus, right? They're on the outside. They're going down together. So Matt Hardy, for, for some reason, he's trying to drag out Jeff. But Jeff Hardy's already, he's already escaped. He already escaped into the match. So, okay, so... He's trying to so say Matt Hardy gets out first, right? And then he's trying to pull Jeff Hardy. He's trying to pull Jeff Hardy. But then in the end, we saw Cesaro and Sheamus land on their feet on the outside, both together. In the end, the announcement is called that your new WWE Tag Team Champions are Cesaro and Sheamus. It doesn't make sense, though. It doesn't make sense. Jeff Hardy already escaped. It doesn't make sense if he has to go back inside and then escape again just to win. Obviously, I think there's another uh, title match after this, but... That, that moment didn't really make sense, like, I don't know, leave it down in the comments below if you, if, if you agree with me, I mean, it's, it's weird, it's so weird. Next, we have the King of the Cruiserweights, Neville, defending his Cruiserweight Championship against Austin Aries, A-Double, and uh, this is a submission match, so pretty good, we saw a video package, and when I saw the video package, I was like, damn, wouldn't, wouldn't it be good one day on Monday Night Raw, or possibly, but it probably won't be, a main event on uh, uh, Monday Night Raw or a main event on the pay-per-view. Holy crap, how good would that be? Because the story building up to it, freaking, it looks so awesome, right? And then when the match started, I was like, eh, backtrack on that, backtrack. All right, so we saw Aries make his entrance. And by the way, I don't know if anybody has noticed this. Uh, I noticed it when it first happened, right? Aries' theme song and his uh, whole entrance has been cut short, right? He used to go, dun -dun -dun, or whatever, I'm not gonna do that. But it used to go longer. And then he used to have like a Seth Rollins thing, so he used to go, go all black and then ba -da -da, da -da, ba -ba -da, ba -da. but not anymore. They cut it short because he's not that, I don't know. <laughs> they don't want him to have a, 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 a famous entrance or something. So we saw Aries make his uh, entrance and he's spotting some Cesaro tape or whatever they call it, Kinesio tape or something. You know, the tape that Cesaro always has on his shoulder after he had that one little injury a long time ago and now he still carries it around for no reason. So we saw Aries jump off the top turnbuckle. He, he, he tweaks his knee like all the other wrestlers on this show. He tweaks his knee and then Neville works on it. So uh, Neville's doing all the feature four leg blocks. He, pretty much the exact same thing what The Miz did. So it was pretty interesting. So then we saw a sunset flip from Aries off the turnbuckle onto Neville. Almost like the same thing as what we saw at Payback, right? And then he locks in the last chancery, but Neville rolls out of the ring and Aries kept on the uh, the submission. And then Neville tapped out on the outside, but it didn't count. Yeah, 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 we know that. So then the referee's like, no, you know, you can't do that. Come back inside. So we went back inside. Neville gave Aries a massive super kick. And then that led into the red arrow off the top rope, right? The massive red arrow. Aries is on his stomach. A massive red arrow from Neville onto Austin Aries, to his back, to his injured Cesaro tape back, and then he locks in the rings of Saturn flawlessly, and then that's it, it's a tap out from Aries, and your winner, still the king of the cruiserweights, Neville. We saw the reveal of the Great Balls of Fire event, gave us a little commercial with the inclusion of the Jerry Lee Lewis classic. Goodness gracious, Great Balls of Fire. Then the fatal four way to determine the number one contender for Brock Lesnar's Universal Champion at Great Balls of Fire. And this match was pretty cool. Wasn't the best match I thought, in my opinion, but it was pretty cool. We saw Finn Balor. Here's a good note coming out of this. Finn Balor, and probably the most uh, noticeable one. I would have thought if he would have done the paint, probably would have won. But yes, Finn Balor came out with no face paint and no heartbeat entrance, no nothing of that. It was just regular Finn Balor. And I was like, hmm, okay, that's not gonna that's not gonna make you win, is it? So no, that wasn't uh, that wasn't a good thing for Finn Balor, probably in the next pay-per-view. And we also had the commentators picking their favorite superstars to win this match. We saw Booker T say, my boy, some more jaw is definitely your win, you dig? And then we saw Michael Cole say, oh yeah, well my superstar's coming out right now and he's gonna win. And then we hear, dun -dun, dun -dun, and then he's like, the big dog. Yeah, and then the crowd's all boo, boo, boo. 
So we saw at least all of the superstars take control of the match. We saw at the start, Roman Reigns taking a lot of control of the match. He did Samoa drops to everybody. And then later on, we saw Samoa Joe and Bray Wyatt have a nice team up. So they were taking care of Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns in a tag team duo right there. So that was pretty interesting. So on the outside, we saw Samoa Joe locking the Coquina clutch onto Finn Balor. But then out of nowhere, right there, the Finn Balor and Samoa Joe are right next to the barricade. So then he would have thought, ah, oh, cool, that's not going to do nothing. But then you see, boom, right into the barricade. Spear from Roman Reigns onto both members. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Then not long after that, we saw Bray Wyatt. He's lying on the announce table. Then we saw Seth freaking Rollins do a six-star frog splash right off the top of the turnbuckle on the inside of the ring to the outside of the announce table. That was pretty interesting. That was cool right there. Then we go to the inside of the ring and we see Roman Reigns taking care of business, doing all he can just to make the crowd go pissed. So he's taking care of Finn Balor. He took care of Seth Rollins, had a little meetup right there. But then Finn Balor came in, he drop kicked Roman Reigns right into the corner, set it up for the coup de grace, lands the coup de grace. Finn Balor's about to go for the pin, but then Samoa Joe just rams right in and grabs Finn Balor into the Coquina Clutch. And that's all she wrote, folks. Finn Balor, the demon, the, the, what's his name? The King Demon or something like that. He tapped out, or he didn't tap out, he, he faded away and classified himself as obsolete. And Samoa Joe, unbelievable. Samoa Joe is your winner. He is the number one contender for Brock Lesnar's Universal Championship. And hell, I would have never thought of this. Now, you might say, yeah, Booker T thought of this a long time ago. But hey, 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 hey. This is an interesting thing. Now, obviously, Samoa Joe is a bad guy. So they're going to make Brock Lesnar the good guy in this. So this is... Oh, this is a dream match as well. This is a dream match for a lot of people. So... Wow, it's actually coming true, folks. It's actually coming true. Unbelievable. So that was my review. That was the result. What did you think? All over, I'm giving this a 7.5 out of 10. Wasn't the best show, but it had a lot to talk about at the end of it. And guess what? We get to see Samoa Joe in a main event of Great Balls of Fire. If that's not a DVD seller, I don't know what is. All right, guys, be sure to leave a like down below and tell me what you think in the comment section as well. And uh, until next time. Hey, hey, Elias. I've always got a plan. What it needs is what I am.